Alrighty, how's everybody doing today? We got ourselves a Husqvarna 125B. And that's a T at the end of it. So 125B T backpack blower. Can't sell in California. You know, California is just not big on like certain things probably having to do with the uh, backpack blower being um, able to adjust the carburetor. <clears throat> Let's see. I have a pull start here. That kind of turns over still. That's good. Right, under here is pretty wet. Why is that? And what is that? So it's coming from right here. I think this is two strokes, so it's about the only place fuel is that wet. It's the only place I can think of immediately. Primer bulb looks pretty juicy. Let's see what happens when we do that. Anything trips. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I don't know anything about this thing, other than they claim it's just, it's just broken. So, it's got fuel in it, right? I think. It's broken. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's got a lot of fuel in there, actually. So I say we should try to let's just check it for spark. Let's see what uh so we got. Let's get this spark plug out. I think whatever the issue is we're having with this thing is uh, probably gonna do with wherever that thing is leaking. So wow. Looks like that went for a bath. It's very wet. Well, that makes a lot of sense. This thing is... Oh, what kind of condition we're in here? I can't even show you. Stupid shroud. Oh, this engine is a hot mess. It's got a lot of carbon buildup. It's a little worse than I thought. All right, hey, let's see. Let's see if it'll spark, right? Um, yeah. So on this trigger here, we get it on and off. So down is on, up is stop. So I don't know if you saw it. Trigger, trigger, trigger here. That's up is off, down is on. Right there, see if we can see any spark. <laughs> that sounds shitty. I mean, oops, I just cursed, didn't I? Mm. What do you think is going on with that? As I keep on pulling. That sounded pretty bad, didn't it? And 
didn't see any spark. Just a couple pulls and this thing is like super flooded already. Let's do the old way, the old fashioned way. You can't see it, but I'll tell you. There's any spark. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You saw that fire? Yep, it's cool. There's spark. So I think we should try to burn off the uh, excess. So we'll try to light, just get it pulling. It's a little wet inside this chamber. And then we'll put the spark plug in and see if we can get it to run. So the spark plug's a little on the wet side. I'm gonna try to dry that off a little. Actually, no, let's just put it in. I'm gonna try it. What do you think is going to happen? A lot of fuel. As you pull on that, it's too half choke.
so it looks like uh, it pretty much mostly runs well. It's uh, spitting out a lot of like uh, it's leaking somewhere. I gotta figure that out. So carburetor looks good, I suppose. Um, maybe. Not really sure. It's dying. Not really sure what this choke position is. If, it, if this is like choke off, the uh, butterfly's closed, or the butterfly's all the way open, you know? Proper running engine, the butterfly would be all the way open and you'd be still operational, but as soon as like, I put it in that position, it, it kind of falls flat on its face. So we need to take a but that's the issue that most likely we have something with the uh, carburetor we need to look at. Alright, so this thing is leaking a lot. You can see right here. And it's just fuel. And it's right focused right here over here on this side. And it, something, it drips down right here and comes down right there. Now, I look at the side of the tank, right? There's some fuel coming down right here. So, go right here, follow the fuel lines. This fuel line is nice and soft. This line is pretty, pretty brittle. Yeah, it feels really hard. So, it could be leaking from right here. I'm unsure. Either way, uh, this uses 50 to 1 fuel. I think we should pull it apart, clean the carburetor. But carburetor needs a rebuild. Redo this fuel line here. And I'm pretty sure it'll be able to be back in service. I don't, we don't think we really need to go deep into the engine. Well, not really. If you look over here, I'll show you. This concerns me. So this is where I think we might have to go a little deeper. Let's see if we can get a little better shot. Okay. Right in here looks like the uh, river has flown. It's quite abundant. And that would mean to me that, yeah, totally is uh, spitting out fuel from the uh, exhaust over here. All right, so I, I think, I don't know, I, we have to look at the engine, yeah, and oh, oh well. I'm not really sure what to think of that. If the engine block, the short block is actually cracked, I'm not sure, you know. So we know this carburetor needs to be rebuilt because it's falling flat on its face. I think it might be a fuel issue. Uh, it could be related to the... Uh, See if there's any cracks in the engine block, the short block that is, and then that carburetor is probably, I mean, this is going to be pretty darn um, messy, whatever's happened inside of the exhaust. Now let's just pull this apart, take the spark plug out. Air filter sits behind this. Oh, interesting. screws use a p2 on this here.
that sits on top of that so that can hold the, the uh, that can screw into it the air filter okay cool we'll leave that like that and then we have a uh, filter uh, gasket in the back here why did they do that this is like a bit of a waste isn't it a lot of something for a whole lot of little nothing. Okay. That gasket looks shot. Yeah, we'll place that. Okay, let's check, really see how brittle this line is. Yeah, this line is done. The fuel line is no good. Okay. So we have. What can we do here? Okay, this is the idle adjuster screw. I want to get... Okay. Looks like this entire top piece holds the uh, throttle cable. It's all one big piece. That's fancy. Uh, don't lose it. <laughs> Hold on. I'll, uh... So these two here. Those two hold the throttle. Top. Okay. Oh, I see. So this is like a barrel chambered, um, so, okay, so, okay, anyway, I got you. So this carburetor, it, that turns like that. Let me pull on there. And that will affect the amount of fuel that enters into, uh, in other words, there's no butterfly, you know. And not on these. I'll get the right name for you, but it's a it's a, it's a specific type of carburetor. And I can get clogged. Okay. All right, so. Interesting. Yeah. Alright, let's get this off. I don't really want to get the carburetor. Yeah, you know. Let's uh let's do that. Let's pull uh let's see, which one's the return? Oh yeah, you can see it. it's just Pissing fuel right out. <laughs> yeah. Here, look right here. Oh, I hate to do this. All right, shake your can, shake your can, shake your can. All right, here we go. Okay, so look at the uh, petrified line. The petrified line is this line here. Take a look. You can see, push the primer ball. You see that? 
it's just pissing fuel right out. So that's where we know the leak's coming. Let me get this fuel line off. Okay. So that one's the return. I'll show you what I mean. So much. This one, fuel comes in, fuel goes out that way. So, see? You push on it. It's like that. So, in, out. So, it means the fuel filter is going to be on this side over here. This fuel filter line is pretty good. Yeah. So in is on the long side, out is on the short side. Okay. In and out, in and out. Okay. Yeah, look, look at that. That's like not much harmonics there versus this has so much more harmonics, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So. We know that's screwed. All right, uh, what kind of carburetor is this? Uh huh. I do not know. It says H. No, it says four H H. Can you see? Stop it, God's flashlight. Ugh. This is 4H, H, don't know anything else about this. Let's get the shroud off. Looks like it has one, two, three. Phillips. of these three screws notice that the uh, thread in is a little the pitch on the threads are a little thicker that means they go into plastic okay. it's pretty dirty a lot of oil and fuel mixed why that's really what's important we need to know why Five sixteenths.
thing is just swimming with like fuel. That is ridiculous. Wow. Oops. Okay, it's like that's just insane. Okay. Not sure what's going on there yet, but you can tell we have an issue. Okay, so this is just whatever, dude. Okay. Gasket there. This is what I see happening here. We have a leak. And leaks are neat because you just look at where they start and it tells you a lot. So it's dry all the way up here. And then right here it starts getting wet. It goes all the way down and it's wet all the way down to here. That means the leak starts right here. That makes sense feels coming out of this coming down now the piston inside of there because of how long this has been leaking right it's pretty pretty nasty in there lots of carbon build up now at this point if I was just to stop here and don't really care too much right just get the carb kit rebuild the carb get new gaskets throw them on right I don't think this gasket's compromised between the short block and the lower lower part of the engine. The short block I don't think is cracked. We could just put it all back together. Get this gasket, the gasket over there, and uh, between the carburetor and the um, carburetor adapter. But the it's too messed up in, inside of that, you know? So we gotta like pull this off and actually clean the piston off and clean this off properly. So let's let's just do that. Yeah? Okay. Glad you agree. It's going to need a much wider uh, Phillips. I started turning and I was like, oh, that's going to strip. It still might strip, but. So I think I already did strip it. Ah, oh, Troy. Let's try the flathead. Doesn't look like there's any easy way to get access to those bolts back there without pulling the engine away from the body of the uh, front of this. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Just trying to figure out how much time I want to spend on this thing.
I gotta think about this. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm really excited. I um, before we move on, I found this artist. Uh, she's a singer. She's Iranian, and her name is just <laughs> really interesting. It's uh, it's uh, Sevdaliza, and uh, try spelling that right. It's S E V D A L I Z A. She's Iranian, and she has a song called called I. I'm um, sorry. Um, an album. Her album is Ison. It's uh, named after an astronomical body, and the uh, the song I recommend is called Blucid. That's as in B L U E C I D. One word. That's uh, Sounds like a closed compound word. Uh, that or the other song I recommend is called Human. And her name is Sev Deliza. Let me tell you, man. The, like, this, if you like Portishead, Bjork, uh, Massive Attack, Peaches, um, James Blake, it's all that sound. You know, it's, it's similar in vain. Um, you know. For all the other artists I didn't mention, I think Minion is another good one in that category. But but anyway, it, it's just amazing. I don't know, man. I can't. I'm just like speechless, you know. So anyway, uh, we gotta separate the this from that so we can get this by itself because I can't just unscrew it. So I'm gonna have to separate this. Uh, get the f uh, so the it's the fan. Yeah, the blower assembly. I need to get this away from the engine so I can. I guess gotta. I gotta make a. I gotta get a proper um, opportunity to clean this out. Otherwise, this is gonna run like crap. So I. Um, this is a ten millimeter. Kind of threw me for a loop. Right, so we got a couple. We have three screws. Looks like it holds this together. Sevdaliza. What a name. It looks like these screws are um, kind of soft locking nylons, nylon nuts. Sorry. Yeah, there are nylon nuts, soft locking. Uh, remember, I didn't pour the fuel out of this, so I gotta be careful. And then I don't try to I try to avoid. I'm going to try to avoid taking a fuel out of it, only because... <sighs> I don't have a really good place to store Store it. It's 50 to 1, but my 50 to 1 container is very full. And I don't want to throw it away, because it's, uh, it's actually a pretty good fuel. So, I do want to try to reuse it a little bit. Yeah, they're all like uh, nylon locking. These these have washers. The other one I took off uh, had no washer. So, oops. That's that's that. A little washer below. Get the other side. Oops! Something fell. I heard it. Rats. Oh, I found another washer. Hmm. It's got me thinking maybe it was a washer up top here. Yeah, I bet you that's what it was. Okay, let's see if we can get this. Yeah, uh, that's what it was. Yeah. I've noticed I haven't used too many power tools on these things, usually. I use, my, I use some power tools, but I haven't used any. Last two videos, really. I'm a changed man. No, I don't really I know why I don't use any right now. So each one has a washer. Now that should separate. Yeah, it does. Uh, it's a lot easier to work with. 
So that's that. Looks like a baby seat for a blower. Baby seat blower. Okay. Um, so, oops. All right, let's, let's just make sure we're not breaking anything. I gotta get that engine out. Gotta get, hmm. You know, there's no easy way into this. I have to actually unscrew all of this, don't I? Yeah, because I can't, there's a, seems like the engine's attached to a bolt there, and a bolt here, one here, one back here. Yeah, I just need to get this separate. We have a whole bunch of Phillips right here. The reason why I'm using this long extension, uh, it's wanted to uh, minimize my uh, body in the video, so that way you can see as much as possible. My hands are so soft today. Reminds me when I had autoimmune disease. That was not fun. Okay, so I'm using uh, this. P2. P2. P2 Phillips. Come on. Tell you what, I'm this thing is not. It's like, it's like just a little bit off. Looks like we're gonna have one, two, three, four, no, two, four, six of these to kind of separate the um, the back. And part of the uh, Doing this work is uh, just if you want to do a good job, you're gonna, you know, you end up just having to like pull these things apart because what happens over time is uh, the hardware accumulates a certain amount of abuse, and uh, that abuse is you know, the person just you know, I don't know what the can why people do what they do, but you know, they just tend to not want to. Uh, to maintain the hardware, so the engine gets kind of worn, worn down, you know, or bogged down, and with all the uh, hydrocarbons that are being burnt inappropriately, like you know, it's obvious this thing was leaking for some time, and. Uh, the end result is uh, it not wanting to run a while. A person could have just did what I did, you know? Well, I'm doing actually with you, so. But they chose not to, you know? And, I don't know, it's like you can't, you can't, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, mechanical work just doesn't appeal to everybody, so. It's one of those things you uh, just accept. It's just the way people feel. And also, it's a cultural thing, too, you know? I mean, there is a, a, um, a culture around discarding things versus, like, fixing them. That's a big, uh, that's a big influence on people's uh, behavior. Now, this is a 5.30 seconds, so... Uh, just to get you, uh, in case you're wondering. Okay, so. 
looks like on the bottom side of that is a, uh, is a and the bottom side there is a. Uh, So it looks like at the bottom of this, this lock nut is what it screws into. So I'm just going to put those back together like that. I only have two of them. Do the same on this side here. Separate. Yeah. Oops. Yes. Okay. So now we're, we can get to the back of this. Okay. That's good. What do you think that is? It's not the same. No. But it's half inch. Sloppy for half. It's actually very sloppy. Alright, it might be metric, so it's not ten. Alright, not twelve. I'll be right back. Actually, hold on. You can wait. This uh, husky set that is like adult proof trying to get these sockets out of there. Yeah, that's interesting. So, looks like they go metric on this one sometimes. Now, I might have to put a. This is attached to the motor side. No, actually. I thought it was going to be a little bit more work. Sometimes you have to hold the. Uh, so that's that. Pull that off there. Okay, great. There we go. We have uh, four screws. Can I use this? If I can put my quarter inch on there. Five sixteenths. Yeah, not too bad. Let's get our extension on that. Yeah, I don't have an extension. a washer on top of that. Yeah, 
This is 5 sixteenths of an inch I mentioned. It or not. Instead of that, or you can use a, uh, looks like a P2 Phillips would work in there. So we have uh, four of these that hold that on. Just see that. All right. This should, this should separate the engine now. All right. Yeah, it's coming off. You gotta be careful because this is still attached. So. Yeah, it's definitely. Let's see anything else holding it on. What can I do? Probably detach that. I don't know if I want to do that. Let's try to minimize the pressure off of this. So there's nothing um, else holding it on, unless there's a. Ah, uh, boy, that is a lot of fuel. All right, uh, I need a moment to myself. Yeah. Uh, that's that's gonna be messy. So there's a lot of fuel on this. Get rid of our highly flammable situation. And there's a reason why we're plan B. I say the, the words plan B or phrase plan B exists. Looks like we're going to make some uh, 50 to 1 veganese. This is going to slide out. Has to slide out. There's screws there at the bottom. 
There's like two. Closer. There's two um, Phillips right there that needs a little love. Not more than what I'm giving it. So, so let's let's fix that. Ah, there you go. Yeah, so, it's those two. So, we're going to put those there. Okay. What do I do with that technology, man? Just pulling this thing apart and never be able to get it back together. Okay, so it looks like I am good. I'm gonna leave this harness attached because I don't really need to pull it apart from there. What because all I wanted to do was just get access to the actual motor. If this becomes uh, an issue, or should I just do it? Yeah, I mean it's just yeah. I should do it. Stop being complacent here. I can just all right, all it does is just feeds right underneath that. It slides right off, and I can get this completely away. Yeah, let's just pull it off. Okay. So. You need to get a better shot of that. Or can you see that? Top of the magneto, the, uh, the the blue the blue wire that's covered with uh, brown is in the front, and the black wire, probably the, the negative, of the ground is in the back of the magneto, like that. Okay, then we should be able to just push that through. That's not gonna slide through there pretty easily at all. Uh, any which way, it looks like I'm gonna have to pull. Yeah. Do I have to? Yeah, I'm gonna pull this off because I, I can't get to the, uh, the screw there. So let's do it. Okay, so what do we have? We have So this is neat. This is teaching me something about the engine I have to fix for my little scooter. This has a similar form factor. So similar that I'm thinking that this might be the same engine. On that uh, mopped mo motor, whatever, motor scooter thing. A lot, well, okay, this has Loctite on it, that's interesting. And uh, I want to ride that thing, like badly. I've had it for a year, and uh, yeah, I just haven't ridden it yet because it's not fixed. And I wanted to make a video out of it. Okay, so... That's the two of those. There. I'm gonna keep that together. But anyway, the, the form factor is very similar. We gotta 
get that. See that just was like underneath like that. Okay. Uh, we are good at this. We can get this out of our blank now. Okay. Uh, there's a gasket here. Let's... Uh, this is gonna... This can be a candidate for replacement, but uh, that's just one thing at a time. One thing at a time. Okay, so... Looks like... Let's see how far we can go with this. This is, it just keeps on escalating, whatever. All right, it's a full tear down. There's no way around it. You ready? So I'm gonna have to take the big magneto off here. I wouldn't go full on that. If I don't have to pull that flywheel off, I'm not doing it. Okay, there's a lot of pieces here so far. If you hear any music playing in the background, it's that artist. Pretty faint. Don't want to have it on. Oh, what do we have here? A spacer. It looks like one on top of that, like that. Yeah, that's correct. So we have two of them. One here, down below, and one up top. So these metal caps. Here, these two metal caps go on top of those right there, like that. Okay. Oh boy, ran out of space in this tray. There's no way around this. Okay. So that's that gasket. Like the oops. Like that. Okay. And uh, we're gonna need to um, set these free here. Just loose. No. No. Yeah, this motor looks freaking similar, man, to the one that's on that.
Where does that not want to fit in there? Okay. Yeah, a little more leverage. So you'll see why I needed to do this. Uh, there's no way I can get an accurate assessment of the, of the condition of the engine. So I have four of these. Trying to get a better um, feel for like the extent of uh, carbon buildup. And we'll see that. You'll see what I see when I uh, remove this cylinder head. I also call it a short block. Apart, you know, it was like, oh, I'll just fix it real quick. Whatever. Okay. So we got a, I'll show you, we got four of these. This should just lift right off. Yeah, perfect. All right, so you can see that carbon buildup on there. So this get cleaned out. We have a gasket here. Now I, I thought that this gasket might be compromised. Um, so it'll be a gasket that absolutely needs to be changed. That's as far as we're gonna go. We're not gonna pull this apart anymore. Okay, so that's that's that gasket. Okay. So right now it looks like we have a one, two, three. I'll show you. Um, all right. So that's it. Uh, I, there's nothing else to do. I feel pretty confident about what we have right here. I'm gonna just. This just needs to be cleaned out. Like a lot. Now there there are bearings in here. So I'm not really sure if you can see it or not, but the piston itself has this, uh, yeah, try this, let's see if this fits better. Okay, I have to get this piston head off so I can actually dip it in the ultrasonic cleaner, but it has like uh, these little clips that retain things, so I gotta like squeeze them in and pull them out, but you won't be able to really see me do it that well because my camera 
just doesn't do that well on the um, upper view when you when you it can only zoom down well but so much. So if I can give you an idea what I'm doing, so look at that in here. I just need to squeeze it and pull it out. So it looks like like that. <laughs> ah, don't lose them. They look like that. So there's two of them, right? Uh, there's one on both sides. They just kind of like keep the uh, the head of the piston. Two of them again, like I said, on one both sides. And that should give me. I need to be able to push this out, I think. Yeah, there you go. So you can push this pin out here. And when that is out, like that. See, so I don't. There's nothing. It seems to be very. Say, Agnostic with the sides that, uh, yeah, there's nothing special about it, so that should give us the ability to slide that off. Okay, now this is labeled, so let's take a look at this. We have a J, like right here, right, that's facing away from the, the, uh, the, the, um, the tank opening. The J is facing that way, so it's written right on top. So just want to pay attention to it. So look at that. It's a little dirty. So I want to wash this, pull it apart. I'm gonna clean that also. So got that. Now the the tank itself. I need to get this. Oh gosh, what just happened? Uh, Okay, very important, very, very important. See this bearing here was sitting inside of this, like that. You don't want to lose that. Let's just push that out. Keep that there. Okay. So that was a bearing for for this. So this sat inside of that like this, which then sat inside of that. Okay. I should have forecasted that. How could you have metal on metal without something to, to ease the friction, you know? Okay. I see. That's why it fights. The engine turns clockwise. So. Oops, and I'm trying to turn it backwards. And the recoil spring is getting bent up onto itself. So, okay, so I gotta fix this fuel line here. And uh, when I look into it, I don't see. Uh, I want to get a little bit more space to, to operate, so what I'm going to do is uh, just disconnect. The fuel tank from the actual bottom of the motor here. I didn't want to do it, but whatever. I'm here. Okay, this is good because uh, I'm gonna have to clean it anyway. All right, great. Okay, now we have access to it. Again, the black line's pretty good. This one's petrified. And 
Oh, well that was easy. That's all. Okay. I thought there was going to be a fight. You didn't even see anything, did you? I just pulled on it and just came right out. All right, cool. Uh, let's uh, let's do this. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna clean some stuff. Show you uh, what we need to order. Yeah. All right. So let's give it a shot. Let me want to show you uh, where we are with uh, what we need. Gasket wise. So. Okay. So we have. Oops. Okay. We have this gasket here for the cylinder head. We have an exhaust. This looks like a. I don't know. And this feels. Gaskety. That was on the exhaust side. This was, uh, hmm. Vague memories. Uh, that was for this side of the cylinder head. So that would be the on the, uh, Fuel intake part. Yeah. No, no, no. This is the carburetor part. Yeah, I remember this. No. Yes, carburetor. And this. Right, it was like that. Oops. So like that. Oh boy. Well, I don't remember. Something like that. So we need, we need, we need three gaskets. I mean, uh, four gaskets. So upon further inquiry, um, I'm looking at the way this is uh, failing. So it's really oily right here. Now, the, see the engine, it's molded in two pieces. Like one on this one on that side. and. Uh, they don't really have a gasket they put in between it. They put like a uh, like a silicone gasket on there. Obviously, um, a gasket that's gonna be resilient to fuel. Now I wonder if this here is an end result of it failing at the bottom. You know. If that's true, then I would have to pull all this off and separate the engine to do that. I don't know. I wish it was a easy way to test it. I don't know. I'll clean it off and probably just put some fuel in there and let it sit overnight and see what happens. Uh, let's just uh, give this a good cleaning. Forty be really good for cleaning this. I need to retire this. 
sock. Right, I gotta get a new one. <laughs> a new, a broken, dirty one. Uh huh. There we go. This is fabricated in Japan. Fabrique hors de Japon. It is French. All right, you see what I'm doing. I'm gonna not bore you to death with the rest of that. I think that came out pretty well. What do you think? Not too bad, right? Remember how dirty that was? Yeah. All right, moving on. That tank cleaned up quite nicely, didn't it? Yeah. So we had to put some fuel line in here. So. What we're going to do is pull this off, or out. It has some kind of like, uh, this might be useless now. I don't really know what that's for anymore, but we'll keep it. We'll put it back on, because why not? All right, so this is a return line. Um, as you can tell, it's, it's supposed to be flexible. It, it doesn't really move much anymore. So let's just get that in there. Let's see how easily that's going to be. So the first thing you want to do is uh, get this return line at a nice, um, as steep as possible angle when you cut this thing. It's going to help with the insertion. I've noticed that silicone spray has been a really good friend of mine. If you have any left. Yeah, there's a little bit. I'm just going to rub that around it. Right, now my goal is to get as much of this into here as possible. So I can see it. It's, uh, it's kind of like want to work it, work it, and then if it's uh, if it's far enough in, right? What we can do is uh, grab this here. Try to try to grab it. the wrong one, I grab the black one. Okay, that's a little bit more. That. 
Yeah, it's working. Slowly but surely. Can I let's get a little bit more in there? Alright, so you get what I'm doing. I don't know how easily it's gonna There's a lot of ways I can approach this. could just actually be enough. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. It's only a return line. Okay, that's good. And then we'll just... This doesn't need to be too long because it didn't really... Didn't really do too much. Yeah. We'll go a little extra. Can always cut cut off later. Okay, so that's that. If we need to, we can always just cut more off there, you know. So most likely we will. Yeah. Alright. Do you think you can do it? Think you can grab it right now? Pull it down a little bit more? Yeah. So there's another gasket uh, right here in between the... Uh, this is the carburetor adapter. Yeah. If you're gonna do it, might as well do it right. Yeah. So that's what that looks like. And that just sat like this. So these gaskets tend to get a little, uh, what do you call it, uh, just get brittle, you know, and uh, and they stop doing what they're supposed to do. Okay, I'll try. To... Oops. I see. There are bolts in here. I see. I see. I got you, buddy. Try to put that back together like that. Alright, well anyway, well, that cleaned up pretty nicely, right? What do you think? Remember how dirty that was in there? Okay, so we're gonna get this gasket also. Alright, looks like we're up to uh, one, two, three, four, five gaskets. Yeah. Clean this a little. Clean together. Let's do it together. This is a WD-40. Make that same mistake every time. And there goes my witness marks. How's everybody hanging? That corona thing is really... It's only gonna get worse, man. I mean, if it's not like... With infections and deaths, we're talking about like the economy. Because what's gonna happen is... Uh, when people are... Advised to go back to life as close as possible to normal... Many people will still remain in that fair base kind of mindset. That means they won't go to the restaurants, they won't purchase things, do stuff. So those businesses are going to just start to 
fail left and right, you know, full, full on depression. I wouldn't say like even a, yeah, recession. I'm thinking full on depression. It's going to get really bad. You know, people are already struggling with paying their um, monthly uh, dues financially to keep their homes. So, I don't know. I'm a little worried about, a little bit worried about things. All right, great. So we got all that cleaned up quite nicely. We're gonna put some things into the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, we'll go from there. So it definitely looks like I have two of the same gaskets here. That one bigger one there. That's on the exhaust side. And that is the uh, cylinder head to the, the, to the bottom of the uh, motor. So one, two, this is like a heat shield, I think. I think I'm, this is the gasket. It's one of those thicker gaskets. This is like a heat shield. I don't know what to do with this, I'm gonna, if I get both of them or not, but either way, we'll see. I did a little experiment. It's not the most uh, conclusive experiment because I would need to have a more of a closed system to pressurize. But um, I poured some fuel, a uh, 50 to 1 fuel on the bottom of this, left it overnight, and it's dry. So this seal here that I was concerned about, sorry, this seal here that I was concerned about is, uh, I'm not gonna, s I'm gonna safely say that it's intact. There's no need to separate the engine any more than that. Um, the piston head came out pretty good. It's super clean. Uh, there's some carbon buildup in between on the rows that I need to get rid of. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. Alright, so we need to put um, the piston back. I cleaned the groove out with... Uh, with this, all I did was just like uh, stick it in here, follow around the path, and uh, oh, if you can see, it's just an Allen key, and uh, the um, I want you to take a look closely at the the the. Uh, the ring, you can see that there's a notch right there. You can see that too well. See the notch? There's a notch right there. So when you put this piston back into the cylinder, you gotta make sure that lines up like that because this ring needs to compress around that notch. Same thing right here, there's one up top right here. I don't know if you can see it. it's a lot of focus. Focus. Right there. See that notch? So that notch is also down here. You need to make sure that the uh, that they're all lined up. But we're not going to put that in right now. We just need to put this piston back. So I'm kind of like doing this over this tray so that way I can... If the spring falls out, I might have a fighting chance of finding it. So anyway, this had the bearing like that that went through there like that. Yeah, perfect. So we'll leave that inside of there. The letter J was facing that way, I think. Right? No? 
Oh well. Make sure there's nothing special about the shape of this. Yeah. Looks like it's agnostic, so. Move forward. Sideways, so let's see what's going on here. Sideways and top dead center, how about that? Mm -hmm. First up, does that go in easily? Okay, so it's pretty, pretty tight tolerance on that, okay. Kind of like got it started. Right, perfect. So that's through. All right, so there's some retaining rings I need to put on. Remember those two? Okay, let's see if we can do that without me losing this and having to explore the vernacular that offends so many. Odds are in my favor. 50% there. Push that down. Okay. Let's go. Let's go to the other one. Remember this? That's what I'm installing. It's like a... It's like a retaining ring of some sort. But it keeps the piston from separating. Okay. All right, so that's a success. Yeah. 